23, this is Houston ACR. How do you copy? Mir 23, this is Houston ACR. How do you copy? Mir 23, this is Houston ACR. How do you copy? You're very faint on the comm right now. Michael, you have to ask that it's Houston. Just keep going, but very quiet. Marshall, can you say again, please, your, your comm check? Mir 23, this is Houston ACR. How do you copy? You're very weak. I copy you clearly, but you're very, very soft. I copy. That's a little bit better. Mir 23, is this any better? Better. That's better. Good. Good. Okay, please stand by for Bill Harwood. Harwood. Bill Harwood, please give Mir 23 a call. Check, please. This is this is Bill Harwood at the Kennedy Space Center calling Mike Fole for a voice check. Uh, Bill, I hear you um, clearly, but you're a little soft. If you can speak up or if they can uh, kick the gain up a bit higher, that would be better. I'll certainly speak up and we'll see if they can kick the gain up. Uh, Mike, are you by yourself for this event or are you expecting the commander and flight engineer to join us? Uh, no, I was told that they, uh, they're going to stand by ready for questions, and uh, should one be put, uh, a translator will put the question, and then they can answer. Let me begin with you then, sir. Uh, Mike, Americans have been riveted by your mission and quite concerned about your personal safety. How safe do you think Mir is? Were you ever personally frightened during any of this? And did you ever worry you and your crewmates might have to bail out? Bail out. Well, that was a lot of questions. Um, I agree with you. It's been a, a pretty exciting mission. Um, as far as safety goes, the time when I felt most unsafe was uh, r right after the moments of the collision um, of the Progress vehicle when it hit down down below us on uh, the Spectre module. At that time, um, I don't know, I've been in, in uh, bad situations before where you, you, know, you, you don't quite know uh, how things are going to go next. And in those moments, you don't get frightened. You just kind of, uh, you go into this kind of mechanical mode of thinking things through and trying to figure out what to do next quickly. And uh, afterwards, in reflection, you know, days later, when I thought about what had happened, that's when I, I felt a little bit frightened by it all. But uh, the, the day that it happened, that nothing really uh, came to mind like that. Um, what was the other part of your question? I've forgotten the rest of it. If you ever had worried that uh, you guys might actually have to bail out at some point when you were going through this process immediately after the collision. No, yes, we, I mean, the in initial order for me to go to the Soyuz spacecraft was specifically with that in mind. When we thought there was a collision imminent, the, the thought in our minds was we are going to have to bail out. And uh, I was the first one to go per the procedures to the Soyuz, and there I waited. Then, as it became apparent that the, uh, it wasn't a devastating um, puncture of the hull of Spectre module, and that we had time to work and try and isolate it, then I came out of the Soyuz, understood implicitly that uh, we were not going to be abandoning quite yet. And uh, we then uh, proceeded to work together. I was uh, Sasha Lazutkin to uh, clear cables and uh, hold a, uh, a hatch in place over that module's um, entranceway. We had about 24 minutes of um, what we call reserve time before we had to be in the Soyuz if we hadn't isolated the leak. And so once we determined that time, um, and Vasily, the commander, had done that, we knew that we had some time to think carefully, clearly, what we were doing and uh, work through the problems of sealing off the, the, uh, the leak in the hatch. 
given all the problems you guys have had since the collision, I mean, you had an accidental power down, I guess, two weeks ago. You've had to recover from quite a few problems since then. How's morale holding up? Uh, we're curious if uh, you guys are tired, if you've been depressed during any of this, um, or, or, or the Mere 23 crew and yourself, for that matter, just looking forward to coming home after all this. Well, uh, at this point, um, the sad thing is that I'm going to be parting ways with the Mere 23 crew in the next two weeks. Um, they are getting ready to go home. Um, they are thinking about being with their families, I know. And uh, I can feel it from them that they're, they're ready to go home. They've been here longer than I have, three months longer. And uh, their time's coming up. I still have uh, three, uh, so two, two months, two and a half months to go in front of me. And I have a new crew to welcome in two weeks and work with for a, a month and a half or so. And then look forward to a shuttle coming up to take me back to, to uh, Florida and then to Houston. You know, we're on slightly different schedules. However, the morale of, of our crew especially has always been very good. And even though I think when you stand back from it, and obviously from your point of view on that, uh, some bad things happened here and from ours too, we never really got depressed or demoralized by this. We, we just worked through these problems. There are a lot of uh, daily chores to do here that are difficult and hard. And uh, there are problems on the station anyway. And we just approach those steadily, progressively, day by day, and, uh, and do the best we can to put them right. For Commander Sibliev, if he can answer this question, um, I'm assuming a translator will come up here. Commander, there's been uh, some speculation here that the June 25th collision between Mir and the Progress vehicle, which you were flying by remote control, uh, was caused either by pilot error or perhaps because the Progress itself had been overloaded and wouldn't respond properly to commands. What do you think went wrong to cause the initial collision, sir? Вопрос командиру экипажа, господину Цыблиеву. Было много разговоров о том, что это столкновение произошло, возможно, по двум причинам. Или из-за ошибки во время пилотажа, или из-за того, что корабль «Прогресс» был перегружен. Что вы сами думаете, что послужило причиной этой аварии? Well, you know, it's very, when you're sitting here and you don't know very much what's going on, it's very difficult to do, and I wouldn't want to make any comments in those directions because the causes uh, need to be decided and figured out on the ground. Uh, all the uh, materials, the audio tapes, the telemetry, and all of that is on the ground, and we have to take a look at that on the ground. And we, we take a look at the, uh, the data from the cargo uh, craft and what type of thrust there was. Uh, doing that up here is very problematical, but uh, I was uh, in control of the uh, the, uh, the cargo craft. And uh, the, uh, the impact was unexpected. The craft should have gone past the station. I don't know if you want me to uh, kind of paraphrase that, but or the uh, translator can give that back to you. We had translation here on the ground, Dr. Paul. Thank you. Follow up for Commander Sibley. I have one other question. Uh, realizing that the, uh, the technical details are, re remain to be determined, what went through your mind when you realized that you could not stop the progress vehicle and that it was going to hit the station? Uh, you said it was a surprise. How much time did you have uh, between the point you realized you were in trouble and the actual impact occurred? Еще один вопрос командиру господину Цыблиеву. Мы понимаем, что технические детали предстоит еще всесторонне оценить. Тем не менее, вот что вы почувствовали в тот момент, когда поняли, что вот буквально через какое-то очень короткое время произойдет столкновение, когда вы поняли, что невозможно уже предотвратить столкновение грузовика со станцией? Well, until the very end, I uh was holding the handles to make to try and get the craft not to uh, hit uh, the station. If it had hit us directly, it would have punctured the uh, core module directly and we would have all died. As it was, it hit the uh, uh, spectre module. They caused a, uh, a uh, small hole causing a depressurization and the uh, uh, crew acted very uh, actively to uh, close the, uh, all close off the module and save the station. Follow up on that, Commander, just to make sure I understand you. Uh, what you're saying, or what the translator's telling me is that if you had not taken more active control, then the progress would have hit the core module, and uh, that could have really been a disaster. Is that what you're saying? Господин Цеблиев, правильно ли мы понимаем, что вы сказали, что если бы вы бросили ручки, если бы вы прекратили управление активное, 
то вероятнее всего грузовой корабль нанес бы прямой удар, протаранил, как вы сказали, непосредственно базовый блок станции. Я имел в виду, это как раз... I wanted to say, right in, before the impact, I uh, was holding this and... Если бы я знал, что вот, я не смогу, то есть я был уверен, что я заторможу, я пройду мимо... Uh, I was uh, attempting to break it and cause the craft to go by. If I had not been doing that, I'm, I'm sure that it would have... Uh, hit the uh, station directly, and if it had done so, we would have either died or we would have uh, uh, been just metal floating in space. Uh, the uh, craft was approaching the, uh, the station without any information from the course navigation system, so uh, in the future, We have to uh, uh, take a look at not is any individual uh, uh, here or there at fault, but we're going to have to take a look at the system as a whole and figure out what happened. Uh, it's, uh, you can always uh, find somebody to blame, but the, the important part is, is that uh, we, uh, we have a, 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 a setup here that was not com worked out completely or, or not uh, perfected. Do this. I'd like to uh, wish my wife today a happy 10th wedding anniversary. We've had 10 great years, and I hope my uh, 30th anniversary will be with her on the surface of Mars. Um, it's unfortunate that I can't be with her today, but I wish her the very best. Thanks, Mike. And uh, another question for you. Uh, given the collision and the, the problems that you guys have had, and by the way, congratulations, of course, uh, given the recent problems aboard Mir, critics from congressional leaders to Apollo 13 commander Jim Lovell and and others have recommended that NASA bring you home as soon as possible and end mere visits by NASA astronauts. Uh, what's your response to that? I think that would be a shame, and uh, I think it would also be a shame if uh, Wendy Lawrence didn't follow after me. Um, because we are, I mean, the United States is getting a lot of experience out of this. We're seeing in front of us right now a station that's been through 11 years of life and uh, has been worked out, uh, has worked really well for a long period of time, and now is older and uh, is up against uh, money constraints and is having to come up with new solutions to uh, some problems with some difficulty, I think. And uh, those lessons, we will only come across ourselves uh, on the International Space Station in a few years uh, from now once it's been established in space. So this experience, I think, is really, really very valuable for us now. And um, I don't think it's a great price to pay for the United States to have a, uh, a permanent presence of an astronaut on board the uh, Russian space station Mir. And I think though the conditions here are hard, and uh, they're not as optimum as they could be for uh, the science experiments and other things, what we're learning in terms of operations, how to work together, is just absolutely uh, priceless to Wendy Lawrence's flight and uh, Dave Wolf's in that context, how important is it that the upcoming internal spacewalk to restore power to Spectre, the Spectre module, how important is it that that is successful? In other words, if power is not restored, how much useful science can you do and how could NASA justify sending anyone else? Well, I, I, in my own mind, I separate the, uh, the science mission from the reason for being here. I believe the reason why America is working with Russia is to uh, further the international relations and cooperation to bring Russia into the fold of the Western commercial sector and to allow us to work together. And so we don't need science on board there to do that. However, it's very nice and very, very profitable if we can do science as well as just be here helping out with the operations. Right now, um, I have a number of experiments that are getting by without the power in Perota and Spectre. Um, However, I believe to do good science here, you do need power from uh, Spectre feeding the Perota module. And so that EVA is critical to a science program on board the space station there. How confident are you that the Mir-24 crew will in fact be able to make that repair? And what are your thoughts downstream about the feasibility of ultimately repressurizing and re recovering the entire module itself? Over. I honestly um, don't know. Uh, the whole plan, as laid out to us, looks good. I, I think um, we have the hardware here. It's struck behind Sasha, who's filming this right now. Um, it's ready. It's in the um, in the node and ready to go. We were ready to go and do the EVA uh, should we have been called on to do that. The um, 
I think that procedure is straightforward enough. Um, it's just the unknowns out there are what has happened to the module Spectre in terms of getting the power from the arrays through the uh, structure of the Spectre to the cables to, uh, which Anatoly and Pasha are going to uh, be connecting up. So beyond that, we don't know so much. I know that the EVA can be conducted, and I know the cables can be conducted, can be connected together. But, and beyond that, whether they can do a repair on the outside of uh, Spectre or not, um, again, this is all new ground. And this is very, very interesting and worthwhile ground that uh, people are investigating and trying to solve together. This is a joint effort to repair the Spectre. Uh, Americans are involved, our specialists are involved in this work, as well as the Russians are. In, and I think the experience is going to be very valuable. However, we do not know whether it will work uh, as far as repressurizing Spectre goes. Do you have any concerns about uh, the possibility of contaminants in, in the sense of blood samples or any other liquids that may have been released in the accident? Any concerns about cleaning that up or any threat to either EVA crew members or repressurizing down the road? Um, that has not really been discussed uh, on our normal technical discussions with the soup. I think because we... We honestly just don't know. However, I, I, I lived in Spectre. That was where I had my stuff. And I had one or two drink bags on the walls. Uh, there were some fluids there. There is some blood in, um, in a refrigerator, which was long, long ago uh, lost power, of course. However, they're all contained, um, the blood samples especially. So I don't think they're going to be a problem. The only thing I'm slightly concerned about is whether or not my uh, shampoo bottles and the, uh, the drink bags burst before they um, froze. But most likely, they just froze and formed slivers of ice. And that's the condition that they'll be found in uh, Inspector. I doubt very much that um, there's going to be much floating around in there. It was basically in pretty good shape in terms of things being tied down. Tom, and uh, the last question I was going to ask, if you have time to answer it, was what happened during the power down two weeks ago? A cable was accidentally unplugged. We were curious as to how that happened, who might have unplugged the cable, and what the consequences were. And thanks. Oh, you're most welcome. That, that's a, basically, we have uh, to get the, the node ready. The node is, is the junction of all the modules of the uh, space station there. And the cables, the, unfortunately, cables laid across the, uh, the portholes. And those have to be unstuck so that uh, we can do an EVA from within the, uh, the node. And uh, the crew were unsticking um, one of about 100 or so cables. And uh, when I say unstick, they're unplugging them, and they're big, big, thick cables. And they're all the same color. They all look the same. Um, per list of the, uh, the ground is sent up. And one of those was uh, mistakenly unplugged. And even as it was unplugged, we got an, uh, an alarm uh, and an emergency in the attitude control system. At which point beyond that, the, st the uh, station lost attitude control and caused us to uh, basically hang out of control in space for about uh, two or three hours while the space station gyroscopes, which normally stabilize it effectively, span down. And only after three or four hours was Vasily able, uh, with Sasha and my help, to, to go to the Soyuz spacecraft and then control manually the space station. And it's a very tricky problem to try and get the space station to spin in a rather rough way so that its solar arrays were pointing at the sun. And then we were able to reestablish power. But because we were floating out of control for three or four hours, uh, well, for a, num a number of hours, we lost power because our solar arrays were no longer pointed towards the sun. Dr. Fole, this is Houston ACR. That concludes this morning's events. Thank you. Переворачивайся на оборот, приезд. Достаешь два спандера, становишься. Ой. Близко, да, сейчас я. Нет, Василь Васильевич, на сонаризатор. Ну, мы тут, тут все готовы пользоваться, поэтому на дорожке там неудобно заниматься этим спандером, а здесь-то попроще. Понятно, да? можно смотреть. Можно вот так, и в окошко встать, то есть, я такие движения делать. С металлом. Либо просто вот такие движения, перекрестные, ну как угодно. Это уроки физкультуры и космоса. Да. Пакет можно делать.
А, ребята, кстати, насчет пакета, вот а, как телевидение потом отключит, поработает. Хорошо, Хотя, в принципе, оно и так не мешает. Можно это, можно.